All right, and here we are at part seven of the SSH series, sshd underscore config. This is the configuration file for the OpenSSH server. Pretty much the meat of the matter. We just got done with the client. Now it's time to get to the server side of things. So let's look over here again. Quick review. There's the config file for the client. Here's the config for the server. Uh, these two things right here, these are... Um, informational I'll cover them this is gonna be the last video so it might be a little bit longer because I'm gonna cover uh, these three things all in one so with that I will close this out and we are at part seven and here's the configuration looking at this this is s it's s s h d underscore config Here's our port 9922. You can change that to whatever port you want. Again, it has to match um, in IP tables and other configuration areas, so make sure you're consistent in that. You might want to check with the uh, IANA or INA, as some people call it, the list of ports. Make sure you're not using a popular port that another uh, daemon might use. You know, don't put your SSH on uh, port 21 and try and run an FTP server it's not going to work out too well for you so make sure you check that list pick something that's not uh, assigned it does get updated often so keep that in mind as well now earlier I had mentioned in IP tables about binding to the Ethernet uh, network card ETH0 ET or one or whatever your your ether uh, card is usually it's zero for the default one wireless tends to be like Wi-Fi zero or WLAN zero um, you can make it so that you can only SSH in from certain IP addresses uh, we saw in one of previous videos how you could limit it to class here's another way of uh, limiting things the listening now I've got this wide open again because things are set up to be LAN only I guess I could tighten it up a little bit I, I probably should but there's no internet access to the SSH so uh, I guess I'm kind of being a little lazy and not in a hurry to do that but it is on my to-do uh, here you can see protocol 2 I've taken away 1 1 is in the client so it's compatible but on the server side only protocol 2 is allowed uh, going into the whole key thing uh, which I covered password versus key here's the host key setup uh, use privilege separation you definitely want that turned on the yes uh, here's your encryption basically part of that the the key regenerate build the, the bits uh, here's the logging this ties into the stuff I covered earlier the authentication you can set in a grace time so uh, your login grace time I have 20 seconds you can make that less uh, if you make it too short then you're gonna time out you're not gonna be able to log in so you definitely want to have that you know 15 seconds 20 seconds I, I wouldn't set it too uh, too long nothing crazy like 60 30 is probably about the most I would go and even that's pushing it the big one uh, right here permit root logon no absolutely not I'm not even gonna bother explaining this one if if you think you need to log in as root either via SSH or locally on your machine I, I can't stress it enough and I could make a video on that just alone um, just don't do it I know people do and teach their own but my advice is don't do it you, there's no reason to log in as root um, quick review in case you don't know if you log in locally as root everything has root access your X session Firefox uh, evolution your mail client Thunderbird whatever you're using everything has root you, you don't need that um, if you use sudo from a normal account you know super user do what uh, sudo does is it gives you the root level access but it's very limited it times out it's logged um, yes you can certainly 
do damage doing sudo as you can logging in as root. If you RM, RF your drive as sudo, yeah, you're going to tank it just like if you're logged in as root. The difference is that you're not giving everything root access. When you sudo, your X session doesn't have root. When you log in as root, it does. Um, obviously, SSH, especially if you're tunneling, it's just a bad idea. So, strict modes, you definitely want that on, yes. Uh, RSA authentication, yes. Public authentication, if you're using the keys, definitely. Here's a list of the key files. Uh, percent %h is your home directory, and then .ssh is a hidden, and then the authorized keys. This is also for your uh, known underscore host star. In the last video, when it was asking me to add that, that's where that was added to, is the known underscore host file, which is also in this .ssh uh, hidden directory of my home folder. So, moving on down the line, we can see more. Uh, I can turn off ignore known host if I want, uh, or turn it on, I have it turned off. Permit empty passwords. This is a big one too. Why would you want to allow um, empty passwords? Uh, kind of diverging a little bit on this. There was a, a picture displaying device. It was like a uh, one of those things that you could download your photos to. It's called a Chumbi. And you could log into it with SSH with no password. And it was wireless. The uh, first time I saw that thing, it made me think immediately of wow if you could just basically recompile the OS on that uh, put on some packet sniffing things and uh, hook it up to a UPS and stick it in a ceiling somewhere I mean there you go that's gonna use a lot less power than a laptop would and you can SSH into it and uh, heck it's even set up to SSH into with no password as root I mean, how insecure is that? Funny thing is, there's probably some of these things out on people's networks, and they have no idea. And, uh, yeah, it's it's just a epic fail waiting to happen. So, you definitely don't want to log in as root. You definitely don't want to uh, not have a password. And passwords, obviously, should be a minimum of eight uh, alphanumeric width symbols uh, definitely a good idea to make it as complex but yet still memorize a, uh, what's memorable as possible um, I guess in my own scheme I tend to use rhyming things so that uh, it's easy to remember you know dollar sign 43 GT 6 C DV 7 s not a real password but you can see where it rhymes something like that. So here you can set up your challenge authentication if you want to involve PAM, password authentication. Uh, you definitely want to have that on as yes. Kerberos, I have that uh, disabled, but you can certainly use it. X forwarding is set to yes. If you want to disable that, um, you can. Obviously, if you're running a, a server, you know, without a GUI on it strictly command line I mean have that no you're, you don't even have X on it tunneling X is a security risk definitely uh, it can be a little slow if you're doing it over the internet definitely since I'm doing everything land side I'm not too concerned about it but normally that would be set to no and you wouldn't do X stuff over SSH so Again, tying into the display, there's that. Here's some other information. Yes, you want to use the Keep Alive. Um, remember on the client side with the SSH underscore config, how I had it set up. Well, this has to be turned on to yes. If you have it no or commented out, then obviously that's not going to work. Now, here you can see the banner, and it's going to the forward slash Etsy forward slash issue dot net. That's the thing that came up uh, when I logged in on the SSH server. You can comment that out, then it doesn't display it. And then this part down here, you don't really need to delve into unless you want to. This is not in the file by default, and 
you can add this so basically in here right now it's commented out and so what you would do is you would uncomment that after allowed users in a space you would put the name of the users this is actually a example file this is not my actual ssh d underscore config file so if it was this would be commented out like that and then there would be a list of usernames that are allowed in the system next you have denied users and deny user root even though I have root disabled with a no I still do it here why just because I'm picky like that that's how I roll so I'm gonna cancel out of that and here's the issue.net pretty simple I had a logo there's a website you can go to that you can make a little logo on there I do that just so it helps you know what system you're logging into right away and um, not a big thing not something you have to have but nice too and then lastly we have the zero zero hyphen header um, this is on an Ubuntu system it's not on all systems this text right here is echoed and it's displayed right before the etc forward slash issue dot net text is that I just showed you so this is displayed first and then the other one is displayed second you don't need either one you can have one you can have both uh, however you want to roll it's entirely up to you but that's pretty much the nuts and bolts of SSH and what's going on with it so there's always more you can do and this is not a all-inclusive or super in-depth uh, instructional series on SSH but it's enough that it'll give you a good idea on where you need to go some things you need to do and as always there's a million ways to configure it so whatever way you do I hope it works for you I hope this helped uh, I will make some more videos on some other subjects that are a lot more technical and a lot more in-depth but uh, I just wanted to do this first series and kind of keep it simple. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one.